Hello YouTube, this is Alex and in this video I'm going to be talking about the simple guide to trade options. And this is going to be a multi-part series. Uh, hopefully at the end of this you will understand how to trade options and how to basically make money with them. So this is part one, options 101, the key elements. If you have no idea about options, this is where you should start. If you know the basics then you can uh, Fast forward and see what we're uh, in the next video where we're going to start talking about strategies. So let's see the definition of what is an option. And this is, I'm using Investopedia for the definition. And basically, options are financial derivative sold by an option writer, that's the seller, to an option buyer. Also, the contract offers the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to buy with a call option or sell with a put option, the underlying asset at an agreed upon price during a certain period or on a specific date. So basically the different asset can be stocks, it can be ETFs, it can be futures, uh, it can be a house in the example we're gonna be uh, talking. And we're gonna be discussing different uh, parts of what constitutes an option. And the agreed upon price is called the strike price. So that's uh, another very important difference from the option price uh, that we'll be discussing. So let's talk about the key co components of an option. First, there are only two types of options. The there are the calls and the puts. So that one thing that you need to remember uh, again. If, if you're the buyer of a call option, you have the, the option to buy an asset at X price. If you are the owner of a put, then you have the option to sell that asset or whatever the, the asset is, the underlying, to the struck price, the price that is agreed upon. Another key component is the option price. That's what the option buyer has to pay for it to get the option or the option seller uh, receive as a credit. And that's different from the strike price. The strike price is gonna be the, the agreed upon price where you want to uh, exercise or execute the buy or sell of the asset. We're also gonna discuss that the date of expiration is how long will the option be valid, right? Uh, what is the life lifetime of that option? It can be one week, it can be one month, it can be uh, one year, uh, a couple of months, whatever. So all of these different components uh, is are options that you can uh, decide upon. So what type of options? We'll be talking about again there are only two type of options there are calls versus puts and we're gonna discuss a, a short example so that make it try to make it easier to understand so a call option is similar to an option when you want to buy a house so we're gonna use that as an example let's say uh, Joe bought an option and he paid two thousand dollars to buy a house at the agreed upon price of $100,000 during the next two months. So again, the price of the option is $2,000. The strike price in this, in this case is $100,000. The asset is going to be the house and the day to expiration will be two months, right? Two months, this option is going to be uh, valid. So if the house increases in value, let's say to $110,000, Joe can buy for $100,000 the, the house. And in that case, he's gonna be making the $10,000 in excess minus the $2,000 that he paid for it. So he essentially will be making $8,000. Uh, but let's say if Joe doesn't even want to buy the house, he doesn't have to. 
you can actually sell that option to someone who does want to buy the house. So that and that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be trading options. We're not gonna uh, wait for for it to to get assigned or, or get the house per se. We're gonna try to sell the option. So in this case, let's say Joe uh, finds uh, someone else that wants to buy the house, and the price of the market right now is 110, and you have a, a document that is saying that you can buy it for 100,000, right? So that contract that document that option is gonna have a value and you pay two thousand dollars for it but right now the difference between this strike price and the 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 price where the asset is right now is much bigger so you will be able to sell that uh two thousand th that option for more than two thousand dollars right so let's say you can sell it for uh, ten thousand dollars right in that case, then again, you made that a a thousand uh, dollars in difference, but you never had to uh, pay for the house. So, but what happened if the house decreases in value? Let's say during those two months, the the house is now worth ninety thousand dollars. Then it doesn't make sense uh, to Joe to buy it at one hundred thousand dollars, right? He can just go directly to the marketplace and buy the neighbor house that is exactly the same house at a better price right so in essence when joe buy the option he wants he benefits when the price of the option of the house or the asset goes up when he buy the call option what is similar to a call option right uh, So let's see the difference when we do it with a put option. So a put option is similar to an insurance policy. So let's say Joe bought an insurance policy and he paid two thousand dollars to protect his house, and the he, the value that it protects the house is one hundred thousand dollars against fire for the next year. So again, the asset of the option. In this case, the insurance policy is the what we is similar to the put option. Is the asset is gonna be the 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 insurance the pay the the value of the house, which will be one hundred thousand dollars, which is the strike price in this case, and the price of the option will be two thousand dollars, and again the time to expiration will be one year. So this one will be longer. In the, in the house burns down, Joe gets the $100,000 for damages, right? And if there is no fire, Joe lose the $2,000 of the premium paid for the policy. Right? So it's similar to the insurance that you pay for every year for your car or your house or, or, or whatever, right? So let's discuss uh, factors that influence the option prices. And each contract of option is important to understand that are based on 100 uh, stock shares when we're talking about uh, stocks and that's what we're gonna start uh, discussing since it's the the, the basic or, or simplest uh, way so the underlying price is one of the factors the strike price the time until expiration the expected volatility and the interest rate and dividends so the interest rates and dividends are not that important because that's something that uh, we know in, in advance uh, and is uh, static but the other uh, four points we're gonna be discussing them so let's start with the underlying price so here we are in, in my broker account this is using Tastyworks, I'm gonna be doing the example of Microsoft. We can here, see here, you can put the quote here of Microsoft, and you can see again here, the, the name of the stock. And this is basically the option uh, chain. And again, here's the quote, this is the, the, the underline, 
the price of it is going to be this one. The last price is 98 with 23 cents. That's, that's supposed to be the close of last Friday. And the expiration is going to be this one. See, 25 days, 53 days, 81 days, and so on. And if we open one of these, let's say we open this one, these are going to be the type strike prices. So now, these will be this, the strike prices over here. And again, the left side are going to be the calls. These are the calls. And the right side are going to be the puts. Right? And all in between are, are going to be the, the different prices. But let's discuss the elements of how the the options are priced for example first is going to be the price of the underline so here again we see 98 to 23 dollars and let's see the call the, the, the side this side is, is for the calls and we see this uh, orange line this is where the price actually is right now so the price is 98.23 and it's going to be between these two strikes so you see this uh, little arrow that means that everything from here to this side in the call side are going to be in the money so if you own uh, the call you'll be making money if, if the price is uh, because you, you're going to be below where the current price is right now and is the inverse on the put options right so uh, this is the, the side of the put options and these are the ones that are in the money this is this will be the at the money and this we're gonna be out of the money right so let's see for example if I want to buy uh, the at the money which is the closer to the money we don't have a, a strike price that is exactly this this price, but 97.50 is gonna be the the closest one. So we're gonna be using this one. Let's see, what we're gonna buy. If I just click here, you see the green uh, box is telling us that I'm gonna buy. If I buy, and this is the price that I'll be paying. So I will be paying six dollar with fifty cents for each contract. But remember, each contract means one hundred. Uh, stock so it will be 100 uh, Microsoft stocks so the max loss will be 650 multiplied for 100 will be 650 dollars that will be my max loss but if we instead of uh, buying this one at, at the money this is gonna call, call us, cost us six dollars with 50 cents let's say we go to another underline that is uh, more expensive so this is uh, close to $100 let's go to Amazon which is a lot more expensive and again we're gonna go to the 53 days so that we can compare kind of apples to apples we open this chain and we go again this is the the price for Amazon close which is over $1,000 and the add the money will be this one again we don't have the exact one but it's the closest one right Let's say we want to buy it. Now it costs us one hundred and fourteen dollars instead of the six and a half dollars. So again, we multiply that for one hundred, and the maximum loss or the cost for to buy this option will be eleven thousand dollars, eleven or over eleven thousand dollars, right? And that's because the underlying price is more expensive so the more expensive the underlying or the asset in this case this the stock the more expensive is gonna be the the option right now we go back to Microsoft and another uh, thing will be the strike price that will determine the price of the option so we're back again in, in, in Microsoft in 53 days to expiration and add the money, it's, it's gonna cost us six dollars with fifty cents. 
the farther we go out of the money, the cheaper it's going to be. So I can drag it and let's say instead of the 9750, now I am buying the 110 instead of the 650. You see the price is going down every time I move it, right? So the further away is going to be cheaper. Now it's $195 my cost. And if I go further away, it's going to be cheaper and cheaper, right? But it's cheaper because the probabilities of making money with this are going to be uh, lower. So th this is very cheap. Uh, like around forty dollars, but the prob probabilities of making money will be nine percent. So that's not that good, and, and that's uh, the equivalent of buying lottery tickets, and that's one of the biggest mistakes uh, most people that try to trade options do. They try to buy out of the money options. The next part will be the time to expiration. So let's go back again to the at the morning 97.50. Again, $6 with 50 cents. And this is for 53 days. So let's clear this up and close it. And what happened if we go to the 81 days? We open up 81 days and we go to the exact strike price it was 97.50. Let's say we want to buy it, and now it costs us seven dollars with twenty-two cents, or seven hundred and twenty-two dollars instead of the six hundred and fifty, right? And it's because now instead of fifty-three days, we will have eighty-one days, so we will have uh, more time to be right, in other words. And the last part to un understand the different uh, prices or the, the, the last part I will be discussing is going to be the volatility. For example, the more volatile the asset, the more likely you will get to, to that price. So let's say I, I bought the 110 and, and in this case it's going to cost me $2.46 or $246. And the how do we know if if the is, is it volatile or not or not is with the implied volatility here we can see the IV means implied volatility and this is 40 percent which equals in in this 81 days 12 dollar 50 cents this is gonna be the expected uh, volatility or expected move either up or down during this period so let's go back to the 53 days that are the one that that we were using before again we buy this one 650 and in this case the implied volatility is 43.7 percent so if we compare that with a, a less volatile uh, stock let's look one similar date and similar price so this is uh close to 100 let's see if we can find one so let's say we, we compare it with procter and gamble which will have a lower Implied volatility of 28 in this period. Let's open the 53 days, and the current price is 90 dollars, so it's lower than than Microsoft, but it's close enough. And we're gonna be using the one at the money. So if we are going to buy this one, it will cost us close to four dollars. So in the other one was uh, closer to six dollars, and now it's four dollars. And one of the reasons is because of the implied volatility. So hopefully that helps uh, understanding a little bit about options. I'll be doing a couple of more videos and in the next videos we'll be discussing the different uh, strategies that we'll be using and actually how to make uh, money with a simple uh, plan basically. So if you like these kind of videos just uh, subscribe, hit the like button and see you in a little bit.